choose your X-Men. Combine their powers. Save a helpless planet. X-Men Legends. Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are going back to X-Men Legends. I have been holding back so much on so many different Marvel games, but absolutely at the top of that list is X-Men. We have X-Men 97 coming out right now. And so what I want to do is sit down and talk about a highly requested game here on this channel. I've played tons and tons of X-Men games, whether it's X2 Wolverine's Revenge, X-Men Next Dimension, X-Men Destiny, X-Men Origins Wolverine. There are so many X-Men games I've played. So naturally, you'd be safe to assume I played one of the most legendary X-Men games of them all, X-Men Legends 1 and X-Men Legends 2. And the honest answer is, I have not played a single minute of it until now. And so we're writing that wrong in a highly requested game because many of you know my adoration, my love, my obsession, my absolute fiending for Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And Marvel Ultimate Alliance hails from one of the most underrated developers in this industry, one that I recently praised in a separate retrospective on Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. That's right, Raven Software. And guess what they made, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And guess what they also made? The game behind me. So yeah, they continue to be slept on as one of the best developers in this industry. And now after playing X-Men Legends for the first time, I see why so many people wanted me to check this one out. So welcome to our first X-Men video on Retro Rebound. Many more to come when it makes sense. Maybe we'll be doing one around the time Deadpool comes out. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. But otherwise, if you're new here and you're into nostalgic and retrospective content, you're in the right place. Please consider subscribing. Let's start off at the top, art style. So the first thing I'm looking at when I'm playing these very old games for the first time is, how is this aged? And I gotta be honest, these character models are rough. They're, you know, missing every human feature imaginable. But because of the cell shaded art style, that comic book approach, it's weird. It's an ugly video game, but I'm okay looking at it because the colors are great. The environments look wonderful for its time. And so overall, I can tell who's who on screen. But yeah, the presentation is very familiar for me as a massive fan of Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And that's the angle I'm going at this game from, right? I was all the way at the head of the pack. Now I'm looking at the literal framework that Ultimate Alliance was built upon. And it's so impressive how much was established here that was carried over into one of my favorite games of all time. So X-Men Legends, yes, you have a cast of many characters as we'll talk about in the complete inbox experience. You have 15 playable mutants. You also have similar mix-up combos, whether it's A, B, A, or A, A, B, B, or something along those lines. What I noticed was kind of interesting is I thought you could only do mixes and matches of combos of three, just like in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. But in X-Men Legends, you get to wail away for up to six hits at once. And it's actually something I do wish that Ultimate Alliance had because there's a fluidity, there's a power to it. Especially when you're playing as a strike-focused hero like Beast, like Wolverine. You can just lay on the damage if you do a combo like that and then follow it up with a power. And speaking of which, the same framework is there for how powers work. You hold the trigger, press a face button, you unleash a power. It's an action RPG. You're going to gain experience. You're going to level up and you're going to apply the stat points and the skill points to new abilities, whether they be passive or active. There's so much customization here. Yes, they even have the collectibles. You can unlock new Danger Room discs, which basically function as the game's comic book missions. Speaking of comic books, you can find those too. You can find concept art. It's amazing how much of the framework is here from Marvel to an Alliance. And I'm just sitting here thinking like, oh, so there was a point in history that Raven was just making X-Men games. And then after X-Men Legends 2 Apocalypse, they just got the rights to do an entire Marvel universe and took that same exact framework, not totally down to a T, we'll talk about differences, but for the most part, and just brought it over to a enormous roster. And that's what put them on the map for me personally, when it came to their Marvel work. Absolutely incredible. What I like is right off the rip here, you're introduced to Mystique, to Blob. You actually see Wolverine leap on the shoulders of the Blob and start stabbing him, which I was, you know, I'm conditioned by modern day Marvel, which sometimes they surprise you with something like Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. And then there are other times they just go a little soft, if you will. So yeah, to see Wolverine first action of the game, 
putting his claws into someone. Pretty cool. But Allison is one of the main focal points of this game. She loses complete control of her powers. Like at the inception of many a mutant stories, she sends lava flowing through the streets of New York City, gets taken away by the blob, and you as Wolverine are now out to rescue her. Just like Marvel Ultimate Alliance, you're gonna go from map to map to map, beating up bad guys, mixing and matching combos, letting out powerful abilities, leveling up your character as you go to the final boss of the area. I will say probably my biggest complaint with the game when it comes to RPG mechanics, and it's forgivable, but just something I noticed as someone going back from Ultimate Alliance to X-Men Legends is the gear system is extremely primitive. Very rare, unique loot. You don't get the loot vomits that you would sometimes get from certain bosses in Ultimate Alliance. And I mean that in a very specific way. I'm a fan of games like Neo or Diablo where you just get randomized loot, Borderlands as well. But I've sort of lost my luster with that. What I appreciate about a game like Ultimate Alliance is loot was always deliberate, where you would get certain pieces constantly. You would always be guaranteed certain drops from certain bosses. Like if you beat Bullseye, you'd be guaranteed to get his accessory that you could equip, those sorts of things. And in this game, it felt a little weird when I, for example, beat the Blob and he didn't drop anything at all, but I beat up a trash can right next to him and it dropped a basic chest piece. And that gave me like, 2% additional critical chance, which I understand it all stacks as you filter your character build. For Cyclops, I was doing more of a critical chance build on him. And so now I have maybe up to 10% critical chance, which makes him really deadly with certain abilities. So I get the idea there, but I think their ability to drop more impactful loot only got better as the games went on, as Marvel Ultimate Alliance suggests. And it makes me very curious about X-Men Legends 2. So as you're going through this opening set of missions, you're actually playing by yourself, and I was impressed how well the game played individually. Usually, these types of team-up games are based around a squad of at least two, and it's not until after the first mini-boss fight against Mystique that you get your first party member in Cyclops. And Cyclops is considerably weaker even at the same level uh, than Wolverine. But upon rescuing Allison, this is where the game opens up and you have another aha moment, like I did with Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So many of you know who have played that game that you get these different hubs like Doctor Strange's Manor, you get to roam around Tony Stark's labs, like you get to go to all these different places and they serve as a hub to level up, change your team, do comic book missions, unlock side quests. And so here in X-Men Legends, you can roam the X-Men mansion. You can roam the sub basement where you have access to things like the danger room. The danger room is, as I mentioned earlier, basically the comic book missions from Marvel Ultimate Alliance, except not as story driven. These are designed to be there for grinding. So there were points in the opening hours of the game. I was getting hit pretty hard and I was wondering what was going on. I didn't die, but I was starting to get a little concerned at how much damage I was taking, and it kept me on my toes, admittedly. However, when you're in this training lab, the game then tells you like, hey, if you're having trouble, come visit this place. And then I also realized that at certain save menus, you could access the training room from there. So the idea is that if you're getting beat up in a level, you could zip on out, grind up a little bit, and then come on back in, which I actually like that they gave this as an option in case you're struggling, you can just power level yourself. And these will be simple missions, like throw a few boxes, break a few boxes, and then they'll do a teamwork one where it teaches you how to call in a teammate for assistance. This is actually something that I found pretty unique to the game. So there are team up attacks. So for example, if Cyclops shoots a laser out of his eyes at the same time that Wolverine does a jump attack, it'll unlock this special combo move, something that, again, you've seen in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance games. Particularly, I'd say Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 really went all in on that, where you would have, like, the combo ultimate attacks. And so you can actually orchestrate these sort of team-up combo attacks a lot easier by pressing, say, in the case of GameCube where I was playing it, like, the, the left trigger, and you can call in an ally for assistance. And they'll have a comic book mission. Sorry, I'm... Did not mean to call it that. Uh, one of the training lab missions, they'll have that as one of the missions you'll do, and you'll just have to press it 10 times, and then they'll do another teamwork mission, and you just press it another 10 times, and you get credits out of it, you get XP out of it. It's a good way to grind up levels for certain X-Men or mutants that you want to use as part of 
your party. So let's say Jean Grey or Iceman is falling behind. You hop into one of these, you grind out a couple of missions and they'll level up with the rest of the crew and then you'll allocate the stat points. I also will say it doesn't feel necessarily great to pause the game, press say characters and then get hit with a loading screen and then have to go through these very janky feeling menus. I also don't think the UI did a great job of communicating to me what skills I could level up until I read the very fine print of what the required levels were, but it wasn't standing out enough. It was in like a sea of text. And also I thought when it was gray, that would mean that I'm not supposed to level that up, but it typically meant that I could level that up. Like that was available to me at that point in time. So it was a little difficult to read there, but nonetheless, this is one of the many options available to you. There's also the forge. This is a place you can go to sell old gear, buy brand new gear. I realized when I was on the mission in Alaska that it's probably a fool's errand to go out and buy a ton of gear because when I was playing, I saw this special piece of loot that I just randomly got that I would have ended up spending thousands of credits on, which yes, you do get money in this game from beating up enemies and breaking all the objects in the environment. And you can use those to then buy new pieces of equipment. Still got a little bit more to say about the game, but what I want to do is get into a complete box copy of X-Men Legends behind me. And then we'll talk a little bit more as we wrap things up. X-Men Legends on the PlayStation 2. Adore the cover art. Magneto, front and center. You see the rest of the X-Men here. Love the art overall. I got this one for about 12 bucks on Whatnot. I don't shop on Whatnot anymore. Just the idea of like a TikTok format crossed with eBay. Doesn't really work well with me anymore. And I don't really like Whatnot as much as I did. So I stick to Macari and eBay, especially because I don't think you really get good deals on whatnot. So nonetheless, got it for about 12 bucks. Pretty cheap game nowadays if you're looking to pick it up. But you look here at the back of the box and it says, alone, you are mighty. Together, you are legends from Professor Charles Xavier. It says, Magneto has unleashed his most diabolical plan ever. Now, as Earth falls under a shroud of darkness, X-Men Legends puts the fate of the world in your hands. Combine and customize teams of mutants through an epic series of battles to save mankind. And on the right side, it says strategically recruit and upgrade your team of mutants from a cast of 15 playable X-Men. Unleash an arsenal of superpowers as you adventure through fully destructible environments. There's a little bit of a stretch there. It's like barrels and trees, but you know, nothing crazy. Traverse a new epic X-Men RPG. I also, that's why I like X-Men Destiny on the PlayStation 3 and 360, because it, it feels like a continuation of that with a lot more choice. And then it also says, join the action with up to four players in multiplayer skirmish and co-op modes. All right, here on the inside, we have a manual. It is unfortunately not illustrated, but it does come with a pretty cool prologue here in the opening pages that I quite enjoyed because as I mentioned earlier, the story kind of picks up pretty immediately. You see this cutscene where Allison is being taken away because her powers are awakening. But here it's talking about the first flakes of winter fluttered down on a biting breeze. Betsy Braddock stepped out into her balcony and stared up at the charcoal New York City skyline in wonderment. Where had all the stars gone? Yeah, I just like how it's written a little bit poetic, if you will. After that, they get into a lot of the core mechanics of the game. As we'd expect, they talk about the UI. And they talk about extraction points that you're going to find throughout the missions. These are basically the same save points that you'd find inside, like the shield save points that you'd find inside Marvel Ultimate Alliance attributes and skills, what each one does, what each AI does, determining on what teammates are controlled by the human, not controlled by the human player and what they do. You can tell them to be aggressive, normal, defensive. You can tell them to heal, all that good stuff. There's a lot of good control over your party members, which I think adds some team play, even if you're playing by yourself, which I personally enjoyed. The skills, the upgrading of mutant powers. These are the pieces of equipment that you can get. So you have chest armor, belts, backpacks, you have health packs, you have also energy packs. Um, so pretty much your mana and your HP. Uh, the forge workshop is where you can buy some. The healer's den is a good place to heal up before like a boss fight. Uh, this is all the, the mansion, the stuff that you can find within. Multiplayer was a big component. I'm sure many of you have stories about playing with a friend or something. Me, I do not, but I do have that with Ultimate Alliance. So. Yeah, that's it. That's the credits. And then the back of the manual, let's see if they're promoting anything. It's just the Brady guide, strategy guide for X-Men Legends. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is your complete box copy of X-Men Legends. You know, when it comes to these very old video games, one thing that I never expect much out of 
is voice performance, voice casting. And I have to say, one of the most impressive things I immediately noticed with X-Men Legends is how great the voice performance is in this game. I mean, the way they're reading the lines, you know, back then with video game performances, I get it, it wasn't really a quote form of art. It was considered a children's toy, a game, a little thing to play. Like you're not gonna express a crazy powerful story through this. And not that X-Men Legends is gonna deliver this heart throbbing narrative, but these characters give a very convincing voice performance where there's no feeling of Shenmue-itis, if you will, as in that clear reading it off the paper, like, can you tell me where the Mad Angels are? None of that in this game. Like, very well-written, very well-spoken, well-casted. Just, I was hanging on to every word, truly. Like, just everyone performs well. Allison sounds a little eh, but otherwise, everyone did a great job. And so I found that to add a little bit more to the story where... This game may look a little dated, and yeah, if you've played, like me, hundreds of hours of Ultimate Alliance, it may, I guess, feel a little dated in certain aspects like the UI or the way equipment works, but a lot of the functionality and systems here that I loved in Ultimate Alliance are here in X-Men Legends, and that makes it all the more impressive time-wise, right? I, I spoke about this a little bit with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and how I found that game immensely impressive for what it was, but then also in that development climate to make that in four years just add so much to it. And what's adding to this game in particular in X-Men Legends is just that so much of what I adored was in a game many games ago, if you will, when you look at the timeline of releases, there was still one more game between Marvel Ultimate Alliance and, and X-Men Legends. And, and so that's crazy to me on its own right. Like there was still more to be made and done. And all of that framework was just carried into something I absolutely adore. So yeah, X-Men Legends, Thank you all for the suggestion. I have been enjoying it an absolute ton. And I'm looking forward to wrapping it up, moving into X-Men Legends 2, and maybe doing like a massive X-Men Legends retrospective. I think these would be great candidates, like I've always said with Ultimate Alliance, modernizing those, re-releasing those. I think X-Men Legends certainly deserves that treatment based on what I've seen thus far. Hopefully next time we sit down to talk about an X-Men game, it'll be one I have a lot more authority on. I'm a very strange expert of X2 Wolverine's Revenge. I. I played a disgusting amount of that game growing up. It's so funny to think about. It. I missed this, which is totally up my alley, but played a lot of X2. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, what do you make of X-Men Legends? How much time have you put into this gem? Let me know down below. With that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next Retro Rebound. Peace out.